What dose of vitamin D does the body really need to be healthy? 800 IU, 2000 IU, or 5000 IU? Vitamin D is one of the most extensively studied, and at the same time one of the most confusing nutrients of our time. Despite numerous recommendations from professional societies and research groups, there is still no global consensus regarding the optimal level of vitamin D or the necessary doses to maintain overall health. Today, we will examine two new studies from 2025, which are rarely viewed together, although they complement each other perfectly. In one, completely healthy young people. In the other, individuals who have survived serious cardiovascular events. But they are united by one thing. High doses of vitamin D were used, much higher than standard recommendations. What did the scientists observe? And what conclusions can each of us draw from this information, whether young or elderly, healthy or already diagnosed? Let's figure it out. The aim of the first study was to compare different doses of vitamin D supplements, 1,000, 2,000, 4,000, and 8,000 IU per day, and determine which of them is the most appropriate. Low vitamin D levels are a global issue. Many people do not get enough vitamin D either through sunlight or diet. The authors wanted to determine what dose of vitamin D3, colocalciferol, should be taken so that healthy young people would have a sufficient or optimal level of this vitamin. This pilot study, conducted from October 2021 to April 2023, included 35 volunteers. These were young, healthy individuals. The participants received vitamin D supplements according to the dosing schedule presented in the table, daily for two months, with a one-month break, at increasing doses. 1,000 IU, 2,000 IU, 4,000 IU, or 8,000 IU. During the break, they measured vitamin D levels, specifically the concentration of 25-hydroxyvitamin D, 25-OHD, which is the standard marker for assessing how available vitamin D is in the body. Based on these measurements, it was assessed whether the given dose was sufficient, too low, or possibly too high. What was found? A daily dose of 1,000 IU was sufficient to raise serum vitamin D levels into the target range, above 75 nanomoles per liter, during the winter months. However, 30 days after discontinuation of supplementation, Average levels dropped below this range. Slightly higher levels were achieved with the daily dose of 2,000 IU. Notably, 30 days after discontinuing supplementation, the mean serum concentration remained within the recommended range, and this dose resulted in the smallest decline compared with other doses. Ruprecht et al. recommend doses of approximately 2,500 IU per day of vitamin D to maintain serum. 25 OHD levels above 75 nanomoles per liter in young, healthy individuals. In our study, doses of 1,000 IU and 2,000 IU per day were sufficient. A dose of 4,000 IU per day resulted in a more significant increase in serum, or 25 OHD levels, but the decline 30 days after supplementation was more pronounced than with 2,000 IU. This dose was able to raise the mean serum, 25 OHD level above 100 nanomoles per liter. Studies by Heaney et al. and Kimball et al. have shown that maintaining 25 OHD concentrations above this level is associated with beneficial effects for both bone health and broader extraskeletal functions. At the maximum dose of 8,000 IU per day, both the rise in serum, 25 OHD levels, and the subsequent decline after discontinuation were dramatic. Vitamin D toxicity may occur with daily intake exceeding 10,000 IU for several weeks or months, leading to accumulation in the body and consequently to prolonged serum concentrations above 300-375 nanomoles per liter. What does this mean in practice? The authors concluded that the most effective supplementation regimen for young, healthy adults during the winter months in Central Europe is a regular dose of 2,000 IU per day from October to April, which effectively raises and maintains vitamin D levels above 75 nanomoles per liter. For individuals with laboratory-confirmed vitamin D deficiency, an initial dose of 4,000 IU per day, or 8,000 IU per day in cases of severe deficiency, for 30 to 60 days appears reasonable and safe. It may be followed by a maintenance dose of 2,000 IU per day. 
both gradual and intensive dosing regimens, are recommended only with regular monitoring of serum. 25 OHD, calcium and phosphorus levels, especially in individuals without increased calcium intake. Now let's consider the second large study, a randomized trial that does not yet have a full scientific publication, but the data were presented at the American Heart Association in November 2025. This study from Intermountain Health called the Target D trial included 630 adults with acute coronary syndrome, that is, they had a myocardial infarction or a similar cardiac event. Observation period, April 2017, May 2023. The average age of participants was 63 years. About 85% of participants at baseline had vitamin D levels below 40 nanograms per milliliter. Patients were divided into two groups, one without targeted vitamin D monitoring and the other with targeted vitamin D treatment. Patients receiving targeted treatment were given supplements based on a dosing algorithm. More than 50% of participants in the correction group started at 5,000 IU per day. This is more than six times the FDA's recommended daily allowance of 800 IU. They came for checkups every three months for evaluation and dose adjustment. If levels exceeded 40 nanograms per milliliter, they did not receive additional treatment and returned yearly for reassessment. In total, during the follow-up period, on average 44.2 years, 107 out of 630 people experienced major cardiovascular events, recurrent myocardial infarction, hospitalization due to heart failure, stroke, or death. The researchers did not find a significant difference in the risk between the groups, 15.7% in the treatment group and 18.4% in the group without treatment. However, the risk of recurrent myocardial infarction in those receiving targeted vitamin D therapy was approximately 52% lower than in those receiving standard care. They did not observe any adverse effects when prescribing higher doses of vitamin D3, and this significantly reduced the risk of a recurrent heart attack which is an encouraging result. What does this mean? The study shows that not simply taking vitamin D, but individualized dosing and monitoring of 25 OHD levels are important. Fixed FDA-recommended doses, 600-800 IU, do not always allow one to reach the optimal level, more than 40 nanograms per milliliter, especially in people with baseline deficiency. The authors emphasize that to consider vitamin D a cardioprotective agent, larger studies are needed. This result is an important but preliminary finding. These two studies show a surprisingly consistent picture. There is no universal ideal dose of vitamin D. If you are healthy and simply want to maintain optimal levels, it makes sense to consider a convenient, moderate regimen, for example, 2,000 IU per day in winter, plus checking your 25 OHD levels. If you have heart disease or high risk, or if you are healthy but have vitamin D deficiency, completely different dosages may be required. 4,000 to 5,000 IU and higher. For now, this is not a reason for everyone to rush into ultra-high doses, but it is a good signal. Vitamin D can be beneficial if used thoughtfully. And future large studies may provide even clearer recommendations. May knowledge serve you well, and may your health be strong. See you in the next video.